Hello, my name is Craig Lang, and I'm a graduate student at Northwestern University in the Candidacy Dist Research Group. I work on solid state and exploratory chemistry. Exploratory chemistry is the process of trying to discover and invent a new type of material, materials such as plastics or solid state inorganic semiconductors. Using the scientific literature and what's been discovered before as a starting place, we can come up with new ideas of new different types of materials that we can try to synthesize. Once we end up succeeding in finding something new, then we get to try to study that material, study what its physical properties are, and explore what that material might be able to be used for. During the past few years of my research, I've discovered some new rhenium and iodine containing cluster compounds that I'm gonna tell you more about today. The specific class of materials that I've been working on are called rhenium calcohalides. Rhenium is element 75 in the periodic table, and calcohalides mean that they contain both uh, a calcogenide, which is group 16 in the periodic table, and a halide, which is group 17 in the periodic table. The chemical connectivity for this family of materials can be chemically tuned by adding equivalents of salt to the structure. The parent structure for this family of materials with no salt looks like what you're shown here. And as we add salt to the structure, we start breaking up the connectivity of these clusters where by the end of adding salt to this structure, we have completely isolated rhenium calcohalide cluster units that can eventually be dissolved into solutions. As we slowly add salt, we start to break down some of the chemical bonds that connect the cluster in different dimensions. And so eventually, as we add more and more salt, we arrive at polymeric one-dimensional chains of these clusters and finally at isolated cluster units that can be dissolved into solution. Uh, what we see in the literature, however, is that this has not been fully developed for the iodine-containing versions for these clusters. And that is where my work uh, has been focused on. Uh, for the last several years, I've had a fair amount of success being able to synthesize uh, new rhenium calcohalides and that are both some of these extended structures as well as containing isolated uh, cluster units with iodine. Having discovered uh, some of these new materials, we first studied them using uh, X-ray crystallography. X-ray crystallography lets us determine the atomic positions of the atoms in our crystal and lets us understand all the bonding in our materials. The structures that I found include the extended structures here shown on the left, as well as uh, structures with isolated cluster units here shown on the right. I developed two different methods to synthesize these materials. For both of these, we prepare the material by first loading our starting reagents into a glass tube. So these would include rhenium metal, rhenium sulfide, and elemental iodine as an example. The glass tube with our starting material then gets evacuated and we seal it uh, with a blowtorch under vacuum to prevent any exposure to oxygen or moisture in the air. Our sealed reaction container is then placed inside of a furnace and heated up in order to get the, our starting materials to react. The primary problem with extending this chemistry to iodine is that iodine quickly becomes a gas when heated and this iodine gas is not very reactive to start reacting with the rest of our starting materials. To overcome this difficulty, I developed two different methods. The first method was to use a sufficiently large excess of iodine so that the reaction container had a large pressurized iodine atmosphere. With enough pressure, I was able to get the iodine to start reacting and to form the materials. The issue with continuing to increase the pressure inside the reaction container was that eventually the reaction vessel would explode due to too much pressure inside the tube. To prevent the tubes from uh, exploding and be able to reach the pressures needed to drive this chemical reaction, I took my reaction vessel, placed it into a second glass tube that I then pressurized, but to a lower pressure. This extra pressure on the outside helps prevent the reaction vessel from exploding, 
and helped me reach the pressures of ionine gas that I needed to drive this reaction. The second method uh, that I then eventually developed let me grow crystals for this material without needing as much uh, iodine pressure in order to do so. This was done by using molten salt to help dissolve some of the iodine gas and have it as a liquid that would then be able to be in a more reactive form to form my uh, desired product and grow crystals. Similarly to how we can dissolve sugar into water and then eventually grow uh, rock candy out of the solution. Having synthesized material and having determined the structure for these new materials, I then looked at studying some of the physical properties. And primarily, I looked at studying the photoluminescence for these materials. Photoluminescence is when you shine light on something, and then it will absorb that light and then glow. So the most common example you may have encountered for this is shining a black light on something. In this case, for uh, these cluster materials, photoluminescence was particularly strong for the isolated clusters. When shining a black light on powder of the material, we can see here that it shines a nice pinkish red color. Combining the fact that uh, the strong photoluminescence for the isolated clusters also lets them be dissolved and processed into films, uh, I took advantage of both of these properties to try to make uh, LEDs or light emitting diodes with this new material. The process for making these devices included then synthesizing the material, grinding it up into a powder, dissolving and filtering to get a nice orange solution, then casting films with that material, and then incorporating those films into a working device that when turned on shows this same uh, reddish pink color. The successful use of rhenium calcoiodides in a working LED has been very exciting. I'm continuing to do ongoing research for this potential application with this class of materials. I would like to acknowledge the funding support from the Materials Research Science and Engineering Center at uh, Northwestern University, MERSEC, and this work was also made possible by funding from the National Science Foundation.